What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript challenge video. And in this challenge, we'll create a function that takes an unlimited amount of arguments and multiplies all of them and returns a result with one exception. If the argument is zero, we just add it to the sum since we know that any multiplication with zero returns a zero. And I know that at the first glance, challenge does not look that complex. But what's really cool, while well, working on this challenge, we'll have a nice refresher on arguments object, as well as some gotchas about it, rest operator, and reduce method, all of which come in handy when building our own JavaScript apps. So the idea is that if I have a function by the name of multiply, and if I pass in four and five, this is going to return 20, since four times five is 20. And then if I pass in four arguments into multiply, then I do the same thing. I multiply all of them together. So this should return 30. And then if I have 2042, this should return 16, since I'm going to add zero to the two, and then I'll multiply by four, and then two. All right, so let's get cracking. And I'll start by coming out my console logs. And I'm going to set up a new function. I'll say function multiply. And it shouldn't be a surprise that if I'll set up here the parameters, we can access it in a function body. We should be already familiar with that. So if I say here num1 and num2, we already know that we can access it anywhere in function body. And in my case, I'm just going to console log them. So I'll say num1 and num2. And if I'll invoke this function and pass in 2 and 4 or 3, of course, I can clearly see that in a console, I'll see those values. So that's good but it doesn't really solve our issue. Yes, we can access whatever amount of parameters we have. But remember, one of the rules was that we can pass in unlimited amount of arguments. So what are you going to do? You're just going to guess of how many arguments. So you'll just continue with num1, num2, num whatever, 99 and 1000. And of course, the answer is now there has to be a better way. And that better way, at least one of the options, is using the arguments object. How does that work? Well, in the functions with the good old function keyword, we can simply go here with arguments, and we'll get array ish like structure. And that is very, very important. And notice here how the item number one, meaning the item with the index of zero has the value of two. So that's this guy over here. And then the second value, the one with an index of one, of course, I can clearly see the value of three. And what happens, I can just keep on passing here the values. And you'll notice that this object, the arguments object actually represents all my arguments. Now this is array ish. So it's kind of array, but you cannot run the array methods on it, for example, reduce or map. So we'll have to do something about it. But it does have a length property. Now, there are multiple ways how we can convert this into a proper array, because that's exactly what we're looking for. But with the ES6, probably the simplest way is just using the spread operator. Now you can also use the array from and then previously prior to that, there was that dot call, but we'll just use the spread operator, or essentially, I want to remove this and I'll say const, and we'll set it equal to args. And then we go with array and then dot dot dot. And then we're looking for the arguments. Now, this is a keyword. Keep that in mind. So don't call this one args. JavaScript is not going to know what you're talking about. This is actually arguments. And if you'll console log over here, now you have yourself a full blown array. And what that means is that we can call our favorite array methods. In our case, what method we're going to call, we're going to call a reduce. And I'll set it up a separate variable. But just remember that, of course, we can right away return our value as well. So in my case, I'm going to go with const a result. And I'll set it equal to args. And then there's going to be a little bit of logic. And then next line, I'll simply say that I'm returning a result. But just keep in mind that, of course, we can directly return whatever we're getting back from the args, and then we'll pass in the reduce. And if you remember, in the reduce, we pass in the callback function. And in that callback function, we have a few parameters, 
Now the first one is gonna be what we're returning. And in my case, I'm gonna call this total. And the second one is the actual item in that iteration. Now I'll set up the logic in a second. And as far as the initial value, well, we need to think here. We're not adding them together. We want to multiply this. So if I'll go here with zero, pretty much all my functionality here is going to go bananas because I want to multiply my result by one, two, three, or whatever. So essentially, I don't want to start with zero, which would be the case if we're adding the values. Since we're multiplying, I want to start with one. And as far as the logic, we always, always want to return something from this function. Otherwise, we'll return undefined. And then the whole reduce idea goes bananas. And therefore, I'm going to go with return. Then I'll check for the item. And I'll use the ternary operator. So essentially, if the item is zero, then of course, we know that it's going to evaluate to false. And then we'll use our second condition, meaning we'll add it to our total. However, if it's true, if it's truthy, which is going to be for rest of the integers, then of course, we'll multiply. So in here, I'll say, if that is the case, if it's true, then I want to multiply my total with my item. However, if it's falsy, if it evaluates to false, then of course, I'll just say item, and then plus the total. And then once I save this, and once I uncomment my setup, I should see that with these two, I get 20. With these two, I also get 30. And then with these ones, I get the 16. Now, one gotcha with arguments is the fact that if you're using the arrow function, actually, you don't have access to it. So let me comment this out. And then below my traditional function, I'm going to come up with arrow function. So say multiply. And that's going to be my arrow function. And if you'll try to console log the arguments, you'll see that you get nothing back. So with arrow functions, we don't have access to the arguments. So what is the solution in this case? Well, we can use a rest operator. Now I have a separate video in JavaScript nuggets about the rest operator. So we're not going to dwell on it. But effectively, the idea is following where I just go with three dots, and then I can collect the values in a similar fashion. And what's really cool, this right away returns an array. So we can simply take this, whatever code we have after the spread operator, and let me just uncomment this part over here. And we right away can run the reduce on this one. And the moment I save, notice again, we get back the same results. So those are the two ways how we can solve this challenge. If you're using the good old function, then you can use the arguments, or you can also use the rest if you want. If you use the arrow function, then rest operator is your friend, where you collect the values, then you run the reduce on that and then check for the value. If it's zero, then just add to the total. And if it's any other number than the zero, then of course, you just multiply.